Starship updates and Blue Origin securing competitive spot for New Glenn development. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. First of all, a little community update. We're growing and apparently we're getting more recognized as well. On October 6th, ASA will organize an event in the Netherlands at the ASTEG or European Space and Technology Center called ASA Open Doors 2019. Apollo astronauts, scientists and Scott Manley will be there as guests and I will be there to report for you. ASA has given me an official media accreditation so I can get all the access I need to bring you the latest and greatest about space and science. So expect an episode about it later in October and most definitely no episode on October 7th as I will be far too busy traveling and recording for you. As always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. SpaceX is just incredibly busy right now. I've been digging into tons of new information about construction going on in Boca Chica for you, so let's look at what's happened in the last few days. Honestly, Maria Pointer is just never getting tired it seems. Something she has in common with SpaceX. Huge thanks for all the work goes out from me and most likely from all the viewers. Show some love in the comments for her, she deserves it. SpaceX has been hard at work on the three now pretty massive new ring walls. Still there is no info on what they will be used for. My guess is still on Super Heavy, the giant booster needed to lift Starship into orbit. If SpaceX wants to do orbital tests soon, they'll need that extra Raptor power to continue on their schedule. Another use for the walls would only be another Starship prototype. Mark 3 anyone? Might be too soon for that, but it would be equally pleasing to see. There's one big indicator for SpaceX wanting to launch out of Boca Chica rather soon again. The pad construction work is in full swing right now. The whole launch site looks rebuilt already with massive ramps leading up to the methane unloading docks and to the launch pad itself. Drilling work has started as well and it's the 100 feet drill from the construction site we can see in these pictures used again. So there must be something in need of a stable foundation there. A launch tower? Or is it just a pad that needs to have a strong foundation in order to hold the fully fueled orbital prototype in place? Work is continuing at an extreme pace. And this looks like the morning after Christmas. Remember how Maria took pictures of a whole chain of trucks lined up at the construction site? According to my sources, those crates were full of Starship internal parts to be used to flesh out the Starship orbital prototypes on the inside. Now that the top bulkhead has been installed on the tank section and the nose cone of the fairing section is close to being finished, SpaceX can get to work on the vital internal structure and according to these pictures, engineers in Boca Chica have been very very busy unwrapping some sweet presents from Hawthorne lately. Let's just hope everything fits together. And the doors are open at the construction tent right now, giving us at least some insight into what's going on inside. Elon recently visited Boca Chica as you know from the last episode and on Tuesday he tweeted the most awesome picture in a long time. What you can see on these pictures here and here, according to Elon Musk, are the hinge mounts for the big fins Starship will get. So as predicted in an earlier episode, the thick round side of the fins will attach with the actuator to these hinges. Another mystery solved. And on we go. What's that big part in the middle? Elon had an answer for that too. A landing leg frame. So Starship will, also as predicted in an earlier episode, have separate landing legs attached to the hull itself. It will not land on the fins. This is what it looks like to build the future in front of our eyes. This shot is so well composed that it is hard not to love it. Like from a Star Wars setting. Wait, let me add something to make it perfect. There we go. Better. Now where are the droids we've been looking for, Elon? I can't wait to see the Starship fly. No matter what happens, it will be a huge milestone for spaceflight and possibly for all our future. Let's make it count. Blue Origin securing a competitive spot for New Glenn development. Now let's switch from one big player in building a space-based economy to another one. Blue Origin, known for their well-designed little hopper New Shepard and for the company's owner Jeff Bezos who happens to own Amazon is working on infrastructure at Kennedy Space Center as well. As we've already learned in Monday's episode, SpaceX is onto something at Roberts Road close to the Vehicle Assembly Building at Kennedy Space Center. 
Now that NOAA satellite that I told you about didn't just visit the area for us to take some nice pictures of SpaceX constructions. It took photos of the whole area. Busy sifting through all these square kilometers, I found something else that might be of particular interest to you. If you haven't heard of Blue Origin, let me bring you up to speed real quick. All the others, please enjoy the show. Founded in the year 2000 by Jeff Bezos aka Mr. Amazon, so two years earlier than SpaceX, Blue Origin might be SpaceX's biggest competitor in the future. Based out of little-known Kent in the state of Washington, Blue Origin and its team of talented engineers took up the task of creating reusable rockets. Their latest achievement in this regard is New Shepard, a testbed hopper that already performed very well multiple times, taking the future private launch provider above the common line and into space with a crew capsule on top. The next step after New Shepard will be New Glenn, and Blue Origin is going straight for the heavy lift department with it. New Glenn will be a very capable Hydrolox rocket able to carry 45 tons into low Earth orbit. It will be partially reusable like the Falcon rocket family, meaning that the booster will be a return to launch site ride. In theory, Blue Origin is planning to reuse the booster up to 100 times, which would enable New Glenn to be much more cost efficient than a Falcon 9 rocket, which can only be reused up to 10 times. Powered by the mighty Methalox BE4 engine, which is capable of putting out an impressive 244 tons of thrust, the New Glenn rocket is supposed to only have 7 of these to get the needed acceleration to lift up into space. As a side note, the upcoming Vulcan rocket by ULA will use BE-4 engines to get to space, so Blue Origin has already sold engines and is in business. After New Glenn, New Armstrong is planned at Blue Origin. There is very little known about it yet, so I'll leave it out of the show for today, but as soon as there's new information about it, I'll let you know. But what about it? When it comes to SpaceX, we have Hawthorne, Boca Chica and Coco to look at. Is there anything we can look at when it comes to Blue Origin? Yes there is, and I have just the right source to show you even pictures you haven't seen anywhere else yet. So let's take a look at what Blue Origin is doing at Kennedy Space Center right now. Welcome to Kennedy Space Center again. And here we are again at the latest NOAA pictures of the whole area. Now let's zoom in on historic launch complex 36. Originally built to launch Atlas rockets from the early 60s to 2005. On Google Images you can still see the historic site untouched. Blue Origin is the only new Space Age launch provider who decided to do a complete rebuild though. So they tore down all structures including the launch pad and started with a clean slate. And that clean slate is supposed to look like this after it's finished. Pretty impressive looking site and definitely built to support the Blue Origin launch vehicles beyond New Glenn. Quite the undertaking. Now let's see how far Blue Origin has come in their endeavor to rebuild the site in their image. Welcome to the New Glenn launch complex. As you can see at first glance, Blue Origin has been quite busy here and pretty much undetected until now as the site can't really be accessed by the public. But that does not mean that we won't find out, right? Now what can we see here? First of all we can see the main launch structure, including a pad and a massive flame diverter system. This will be the spot where New Glenn will lift off as the first real competitor to SpaceX's Falcon rocket family. And Blue Origin means it. The launch complex is huge, larger than Pad 39A. You don't invest that much money if you don't mean business. Next up we have a large ramp leading down from the pad towards the HIF or Horizontal Integration Facility, of which we can already see the foundation laid out. Here Blue Origin will integrate the different stages and get final preparations done right before the rocket is being rolled out onto the pad. We can also see fuel farms for liquid methane and liquid oxygen next to the pad already. The foundation for the service structure and a massive lightning mast. Administration buildings and storage facilities can be seen as well. Last but not least we can see a BE4 test stand foundation being prepared. According to the render it will have two test bays for engines. It will lay out the foundation for future engine development for Blue Origin. So this is it, where New Glenn is supposed to take off for first test flights in 2020. But where will it be built? Blue Origin, as any other launch provider, needs an assembly facility nearby, so transporting the 7 meter wide rocket booster does not become a logistical nightmare. As a direct neighbor to SpaceX at Roberts Road, Blue Origin has settled for a spot directly at the Exploration Park. 
And as we can see in the satellite image, the building process is already at an advanced state. A big manufacturing and administration building and possibly an integration facility can already be seen. And as at the launch site, we're talking a lot of square meters here. Blue Origin is going all in. Expect them to do a lot of things here in the coming years. But one can only see so much in satellite imagery and good recent pictures of the site are hard to come by. This is where David Lavoie comes into play. Thank you very very much for sending me these exclusive pictures. Everyone please give a huge thank you to him in the comments right next to Maria Pointer. He will be happy to read from all of us and he earned it for these great shots of Blue Origin's manufacturing and refurbishment facility. As you can see, Blue Origin is full steam ahead, not only at former LC36, but also at the second, equally important site. This looks very representative again, like a company that means it. From the looks of it, Blue Origin will be able to move in very soon, and right after that, we will see manufacturing getting started on New Glen. It will be very exciting to see the booster go through testing, and you can definitely expect me to cover as much of it as possible. This game of one is quickly turning into a competition which will be very exciting to see. As it looks right now, the next decade will be ruled by private launch providers and the old guys will have to hurry to keep up with these shiny buildings and the people inside of them. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will Starship be ready for the presentation and what do you think about Blue Origin? Does it excite you to see the first real competition for SpaceX on the horizon? As always, tell me in the comments. Welcome to the Patron Shoutout, the segment of the show where I thank all those patrons for their constant support. Recently, they managed to supply What About It with a brand new DSLM camera. All this would not be possible without them and we all benefit from it, so thank you very much. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Anthony Losego, Through Traffic and Warhawk, who has been supporting the show from the beginning on with help and ideas wherever he could. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to like and subscribe as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me more time to focus on what I love doing the most to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. <coughs> But what about it? Thank you very much. And I can't speak anymore. We're new Glengen. New BE4 Glengen. Damn. And the old Giles. And the old Giles. Yeah. <laughs> totally herrlich. Cut it all out.